What you're going to be doing here today for the next hour is simulating a family that is living in poverty. You'll be living in poverty for one month. The month will be made up of four 12-minute weeks. In those 12-minute weeks, it is your responsibility to ensure that your family has all of their basic needs taken care of, including food, shelter, clothing, education, and health care. I want you to take a look at your name tag for a second. Take a look at the, uh, the name, the age, the picture on there. This is the person that you're going to be for the next hour. Some of you are women playing the roles of men. Some of you are men playing the ro roles of women. And some of you are playing the roles of teenagers or children. You all live in a small American town called Realville, USA. In Realville, there are a variety of resources, like the Community Action Agency, businesses, and various establishments that exist to provide services to your family or to get things from your family. It is your responsibility to figure out how to utilize these resources. The idea is to really help people who have never lived in poverty understand that there are serious choices that have to be made amongst families that are living in poverty. When there just isn't enough money, you have to make choices of everything from which bill is going to be paid to do I go to work today or do I meet with my, my child's doctor or counselor. Real life happens to all of us, regardless of your socioeconomic class. Good things happen, bad things happen. So we have what we call the luck of the draw. And the luck of the draw is exactly that. They are note cards with any typical life experience that could happen. It can be everything from you find $20 on the sidewalk to um, you have a flat tire and you have to get it replaced. I've got to wait for the police to come to deal with my stolen car. <laughs> We also got our utility shop. But there's a team here. $310 for you, sir. Yeah, I'm working on it, sir. Well, I'm happy to evict you, sir. Today is the day you need to be, need to be paid today. So many of us are one catastrophe away, whether it's a, an illness or the loss of a job or a divorce from falling into poverty. We call it the snowball effect, that it's, it's one and then another and then another and then another. And, and how do you find the relief to, to stop that from just mounting? You go in with a plan. You think that you have a job, you've got a way that you can you can make ends meet and provide your, for your family, but in actuality, you're just one bad draw of the straw away from, from being in dire straits. One single bad event just compounds upon itself. Soon enough, there's, there's just no way out. You could just see your ability to decide just go to pieces. It was just down the toilet. You couldn't keep your range of responsibilities or resources clearly in your mind, and you just started making these impulsive stabs at what you could do to make things better, and it was never the right choice, and you wasted resources. It was humiliating and exhausting. It's not about a personal failure. It's about accessing the resources and having the opportunity to move out of poverty and move to resiliency and move to self-sufficiency. It forces you to look within yourself and to, to put yourself in someone else's shoes. Not everything as easy as it is in your own life or how you might think just looking at someone else's life from the outside. There's always different factors and problems and, and things that you, you can't know. To be able to have that perspective and say, hey, I understand at least a little bit and I've got some compassion. I think that's an invaluable experience. It was so uncomfortable, just astonishingly. I, it's a big learner, I think. Going into it voluntarily and then having it be so very uneasy um, it makes it a strong lesson. When this simulation ends today, you get to go home to your regular, typical middle-class life. But there are thousands of families here in central Missouri who don't get that opportunity. Poverty does not end for them at the blow of a whistle. And we as a community are better than that. And we have resources throughout this community, throughout this country, to change poverty and for poverty not to exist. It's just a matter of what choices that we make as a society, as a community. 
to, to support families and each of us within a community.